Within this video, we're gonna go ahead and create a simple material using textures. Now we've got three different kinds of textures here. We've got normal map, diffuse map, and then ambient and roughness and metallic map all kind of combined into one. We'll talk about what that is when we get down to it. Now the material instance is really special because you can replace all these and we can actually go through here and we can actually change the tiling of this texture on the fly. So the artist has a lot of flexibility and can make changes as they see fit. So without further ado, let's go ahead and see how this is actually made. Now, if you've already got textures, you probably don't need to watch this part, but hey, by the way, you can go to Polyhaven and get ones totally and completely free. The ones I'm using are actually from here. Um, and like I said, this is completely and totally free, by the way, and they do have a Patreon, so show them some love. You know, a dollar's not too bad, right? So for the textures, let's go ahead and just click on this browse textures. And inside of here, we have a whole host of them. I'm gonna go ahead and choose these two right here for this demo. All we need to do is go ahead and click on one of these. And down here below, you can kind of see the textures that you're going to be getting. You can test to see what it looks like. You're like, yay, that's awesome, right? Up here in the top right, this is the important part. Uh, what size texture do we want? I'm going to go ahead and use 1K just so it's a, a little bit faster. Very simple. It's totally up to you what you use. Uh, this drop down, I'm going to use the zip. This is going to give me the pieces that I need. And then I'm going to go ahead and just hit this download button. The download is going to go ahead and download a zip. Next step is we need to actually unzip these files. So mine actually say .zip at the end of them. If yours don't, that's fine. It's a default not to actually show the file extensions and windows. If you're using a Mac, it may say something else. So I'm just gonna go ahead and right click on this and go ahead and choose extract all or unzip them any way you need to. And I'm going to say extract. I'm gonna go ahead and do this for both of them. So I'll just right click and extract on that one. Go ahead and say extract. Now inside of these, let's take a look at what's in here. So let's look at the mud one. And inside of here, we have another folder called textures. Inside of here, we have all of our actual textures. So let's go ahead and zoom in on these a little bit. Now there's quite a few of them here, so let's explain what is going on. So this one right here, this is ambient occlusion stuff. Basically think of this as like shadows, little areas that are really hard to get light down inside of, little areas that are being included. Uh, the next one here you see is named arm. So this is ambient occlusion, roughness, and metallic all rolled into one. Now we do have those other ones on here as well. You see here we have our roughness. So there's that one. We have our ambient occlusion right there. And then inside of here, we have our metallic. Now we don't have another metallic one, but this one has it all kind of rolled into one. And we'll talk about how we can break that open as we go further. You may not need this one. You may use just these other two. I'm gonna go ahead and use this one so you can see how this works. But plugging them in will be very similar. Next up, we have our actual diffuse. Now this is just color data, okay? There's, there's no shadows in here, there's nothing. That's what our ambient occlusion is for if we need it. Um, the other one that we have in here is a displacement. I'm not gonna be using displacement inside of uh, this example, um, but you can if you really want to. Then we have a DX and a GL normal map. Now the normal map is basically gonna make the flat area look like it's actually got some bumps and we'll be able to see that inside of Unreal. It's gonna be really cool. Inside of Unreal, it uses the DX, so go ahead and use it that one. All right, now that we know what's in here, let's go ahead and bring all this stuff together and start building it inside of Unreal. Now that we're inside of Unreal, let's keep everything nice and clean and organized. So let's go down to our content drawer down here. And I already have a materials folder. So I'll just go ahead and double click on that. Now I'm gonna ignore these other two that are in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just right click and go ahead and just choose material. And this one I'm gonna name M underscore texture because I'm using textures in this case. And this is gonna be our master material and we're gonna make an instance out of it later. So just keep that in mind. If I double click on this, it'll go ahead and open up the material editor and we can start to bring in all of the pieces that we need. Now, what's really awesome about Unreal, let's go ahead and just move this down here a little bit. With this content drawer open, we can actually drag and drop all of the pieces that we need. So if I go and grab this folder, let's go ahead and just kind of slide it off to the side. Those don't need to be that big, good Lord. So with the content drawer open, um, let's go ahead and bring in Let's just do the mud ones first. So like I said, we wanna go ahead and use the arm and the diffuse and the DX. So we'll go ahead and grab those and just drag them in like that. And it will go ahead and import those in. It's gonna bring that back up and you can see they're down here on the bottom. Let's go ahead and grab the other ones as well. So if we go back up here, go into the wood one and into textures and I wanna go ahead and grab the, whoops, the arm, the diffuse and the DX normal. I'm gonna just grab and drag those ones in here. Now there's something very important that I definitely definitely want you to understand is that your textures need to be powers of two and it's better if they're square. So let's take just a tangent and kind of talk about these. So I'm going to go ahead and just open up the mud one right here by double clicking on it. And what's really, really, really important is that they are powers of two and that they are square. If they are not, you're going to have all kinds of issues down the line in a really big project. This is really, really, really important. And we can see that right here. It's imported at 1024 by 1024. So we know that it's square. That's awesome. 
the reason that this is important and the reason I'm going to talk about it and make sure that you understand that it's important is because we want to be able to generate mit maps. So a mit map, basically what this means is the further this gets away from the camera, it's not drawing all the texture and details that you can see when it's up close. It's basically just creating a MIP. And this is really, really, really important. If you want a video on this, I can totally do it. But right now, I just want you to understand that it's very important that they are square and they are powers of two, unless they're UI. And then that doesn't really matter if it's going to be a UI texture. So there's always a caveat, right? Okay, so let's also take a moment and let's go ahead and just close that down. And I want to open up the other texture that we brought in, which I can do right here. So these arm textures, let's talk about this. I'll double click on this one. You can see it's square. Yay, it's awesome. And it looks really funny. And you're like, what is going on with this? Well, inside of here, we have red information. We have green information. And we have blue information. And each one of them is actually a different kind of texture. So the red one, let's go ahead and turn the green and the blue off. Make sure we don't have any alpha. So this red information that you see is the ambient occlusion. That's the A in arm, right? So let's turn that one off. We turn on a green. So arm, A, R. This is roughness. So this is the roughness information. You can see it's very light, right? And then M, this is the metal information. Now there's not a lot of metal in dirt, so it's just not gonna be very interesting. But this is what's actually inside of here, and we can use these individually. What's helpful about the way this is created, because it's got all these different maps inside of it, it's called channel packing. So you can bring in one actual file, and it's actually bringing in three bits of information. So we have our ambient occlusion, we have our roughness, and we have our metallic packed into each one of these different channels. Okay, so that's what's going on with that. All right, let's go ahead and save that. We don't really need to worry about that one. Close down that one. Now here inside of the actual material, we're gonna go ahead and start to put this all together. So I'll go ahead and open up my content drawer and I can go ahead and start to build this. Now this is gonna be the master one, so it doesn't really matter which one I use. I'm gonna go ahead and just grab my mud pieces here so I can left click holding select and bring all of these in at once. So we have our texture samples. So we have our diffuse, we have our arm information, and then we have our normal information. Let's go ahead and get rid of that there. So the first one's pretty easy. We can just go ahead and take that uh, color and drop it into our base color right there. So that RGB into our base color. Now I'm going to change this up here into a plane. And if you don't see the plane, you can just left mouse click and drag. You may notice that it turns around, right? So it's good. So we can actually see what this looks like. So you're like, cool, like that's what that would actually look like. Let's go ahead and take a look at the information inside of here. So remember arm, this is ambient occlusion. So I can take the R and I can connect it to the ambient occlusion. And there's really not a whole lot going in here. So I'm not going to worry about that one. So we don't need that one. And the R in arm stands for roughness. So if I take that G value, type that into roughness. And you can kind of see this actually, you can kind of see a little bit of information on there, right? That's the roughness information. So that's kind of cool, right? And then our M, our metallic, let's go ahead and take that B and drop that into there. And you take a look at that and you can see there's, there's not really much going on in there, right? It's just not a whole lot happening. Now the really cool one is the actual normal. This is like my favorite one. So let's take that RGB value and drop it into the normal and check that out. Look at that. So it looks like there's actually geometry on there, right? Like that's really cool. So this is how we can fake geometry very easily if we're not using Nanite. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is connect all of these the way they need to be connected. So the RGB goes into our base color. The A in here goes to ambient occlusion. The G here goes into my roughness. The B will then go into my metallic. And then this one is going to go into my normal because it's my normal map, right? So cool. So there we go. So now we have our actual texture on here. So each one of these has their own specific uses. What does this actually look like in game? So let's go ahead and save this one. I'm going to drag this over here, just kind of out of the way. And if I open up my content browser, I can grab that texture and I'm just going to drag it onto the floor and it looks absolutely atrocious. Okay. So why does this look bad? Well, this happens to do with UVs. Now we're not gonna go into how to actually set up UVs on an object, but if you're doing something flat like this, let me show you a cool trick and we're gonna build some really fun things into our material instance. So inside of our material, let's bring this back. And what we can do is we can tile this. Right now, we're just tiling it once across the entire surface and it looks awful. But if we were to turn that up, we can actually get a really cool effect. So. These UV pins right here, we want to connect to what's called a texture coordinate. So if I pull a pin off there and type in COOR for coordinate, we can get a texture coordinate. That one right there. Now, if we're tiling this one, we also want to tile these other ones that same amount. So let's go ahead and pull a pin and drop this into each of these. Now, we haven't done anything with it yet because this texture coordinate, if you look down here, it's still only doing this one by one. So what if we were to set this to something like 20 by 20 and our little 
view over here is getting a little bit crazy. You're like, what's going on, right? So if I move this over, right? And now if I hit apply on this, we're gonna tile this texture 20 times by 20 times based on this. So let's say apply. And hey, that looks a lot better. Let's actually dive back down there. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Like that's really cool. So awesome. We're getting a little bit of what we're looking for. Now remember that normal map that was in there. Let's take a look at what that actually is doing, right? So right now my normal map is actually connected. Right, and I'm gonna hold down Control and L on my keyboard, and as if I move my mouse around, you can actually change the light here in this default world, and check that out, like look at that. You can see all the little shadows down inside of there. So what happens if I disconnect this? So I'm gonna hold down Alt and click on that pin, and now if I say Apply, look at that, all that information goes away. Like it just feels very flat, right? So let's go ahead and undo, connect that back up, go ahead and apply that. Okay, so that's how important that normal map is. It's really, really, really nice. Okay, so now that we actually have this made, this is really static and I wanna go ahead and create a material instance. So how do we create a material instance out of this? Well, before we actually create a material instance out of this, let's actually set this up so the material instance will work. So again, thinking ahead all the time. So I'm gonna select all of these just to save myself a little bit of time. I'm gonna right click on one of them. I'm gonna say convert to parameter. There we go. Now you notice the bottom one down here lets me name this. So let's just go ahead and name this one normal map. Cool, and I'll select this one, and go ahead and rename it Arm Map, and we'll select this one, and we'll name this one Diffuse Map. Great, now these are all parameters that we can get at inside the material instance. I also want this one to be accessible inside that material instance, because if I need to change how much it's tiling, I'd love to be able to do that on the fly. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add in two more nodes. So if I right click and look for constant two, so C-O-N, I can actually find this constant two vector. Now, the reason that I'm grabbing this is because our texture coordinate has two values, a U and a V, which you can see over here. So I want a U and a V for this, but this one isn't gonna work. I actually need a different kind of node. So if I right click on this and actually convert this one to a parameter like I need, you'll notice it turns into four different values in here. So let's just actually name this one UV tile, like so. And then this parameter, you'll notice that we've got red, green, blue, and alpha. Well, we just need the R and the G because that's going to correspond with the U and the V. And I don't need an alpha in here, so I can just type a zero in there. And this time I'm gonna make sure that's just a one and that one's just a one. So that's good to go there. Now I'm gonna do something kind of fun with this. Most people don't know about this, which is I'm kind of bummed about, but down here below, there's a little section that says channel names. If it's not already open, just click on it and open it up. What do I wanna name the R channel? Let's call this one U tile. This is going to be horizontal. And then the V tile is our vertical. So U is horizontal, V is vertical. Pretty easy to remember. So now what I wanna do is I wanna take this whole thing and I need to actually clamp it so it's only got two values. And let me show you why. I'm gonna grab a multiply node. So if I hold down the M key on the keyboard and left mouse click, I can get a multiply. Let's go ahead and grab our texture coordinates and actually connect it to the back of this multiply because we're gonna do some math here. So I can hold the control key, click on that pin and drag it to the back of this like so. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take this whole node and I'm gonna drop it into the B and I'm gonna go ahead and grab my texture coordinate and drop it into there. And you notice we're already starting to get errors. You're like, what's going on? Well, this node will only take a float two or a float three. This is a float four, not gonna be really helpful. So what we need to do is actually create a component mask that's going to mask out just these two. So if I left mouse, click and drag off of here and type in component, we can find a component mask. Now the tricky thing about this is that it only says mask on it, so it might confuse you when you're looking for it later. Just remember it's a component mask. So now we've gone from a float four to a float two, and I can drag this into here. And what this is doing is it's taking that red and green and only allowing those two to go through out of this one. So we're not actually getting the B and the A, we're only getting the R and the G. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, so now I have all the pieces that I need and have them set up so that I can create the material instance. So. Let's make sure that we save and we can go ahead and close this one down once it's done. And if I open up my content drawer down here at the bottom, remember this is that material master, I'm gonna make a material instance out of it now. So if I right click on it, come to the very top up here, it says create material instance. So let's name this one MI, we'll call this one, I don't know, texture. Let's keep it simple, perfect. So now let's go ahead and open this one up so yay, now we have a totally different looking UI. But let's take a look at what's actually going on here. Check this out. We have this 
going on up here where we can actually replace textures and we have our tiles going on right here so we can actually tile this across, which is exactly what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and just move this off to the side a little bit. So right now, the material that's on here is the actual original material. It's this one. And I don't want that material texture. I want that material instance. So I'm just going to click and drag this onto here. And like, well, it didn't do anything. And you're right, it didn't do anything. And there's one thing that I do want to point out, because inside of here, our actual material texture, I forgot to do something. So let's go back to our texture coordinate here. And this needs to be set to 1. And that one needs to be set to 1, like so. Go ahead and save that. And you'll notice something interesting. Even though I'm changing the material, you'll, the material instance actually updates as well. And that's fine. That's totally what we want. It's a good thing to actually understand how that works. So yay, little bonus tip. Let's go and close that one down. So now instead of here, let's zoom out a little bit. We have our U and our V tiles. And if I grab this, so I'm just going to left mouse click and drag on it. It's like a little slider. And I can just pull it. And you can see I can change that tiling really easily, like so. I can also type in numbers in here. So let's just type in 20. And we can type in 20, like so. Hey, check that out. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? So now we have a way of actually controlling this really easily. Well, we can also, don't forget, to actually change these textures. Now I need to actually checkbox these before I can actually change them. Now if I bring up my content drawer, remember, if we scroll down, we've also got this cabinet wood stuff. So we can go ahead and take that diffuse, and I can drop it into the diffuse. Changes, like, immediately. Look at that. Cool. Now we also need to change the normal map. So let's go ahead and change the normal map. And because we do have the option to change that arm map, let's go ahead and change that arm map as well, like so. And this will work just the same, right? So this gives us a way to actually change the materials and the material attributes inside of it very, very quickly. So if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, or confusion you need cleared up, go ahead and give me a comment down below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.